early pressure jungle. I don't really think they want to deal with it. So I'm wondering if uh, they're going to opt for that Lee Sin pick again. Wow. But they're hovering uh, over Jace right now. I don't think they'll first pick a Jace. There's no way they'll do that. I mean, he's been hit so many times by the nerf hammer. I honestly, uh, I honestly don't think he's that bad in the top lane right now. I okay. really don't. I really don't think he's that bad of a top laner. But I just don't see first picking it. I mean, it, it limits your team comp so much if you do that. And they're just going to pick a hard engage comp if you, if you early pick a Jace. Well, let's see what they do if I go with here. And I, I really wonder if they're, I mean, if they do pick up a Jace, Old school Pokop kind of thing, but, but we'll see a trundle in here. Too. We'll just throw it all together. Just everything with the poke. <laughs> <laughs> right, God. Uh, but right now they're still just hovering on that one, and I want to see what all sides of the teams gonna go with here. I mean, they had such a a strong lineup, and I'm actually glad to see that switch to Thrush last second right, because that's, D that's, is so damn good. Yeah, that's a really safe pick. I like that ban, which is one of the champions that gives Thrush a little bit more trouble. Um, but I think it's really good. Even if they pick Leona, Thresh is pretty good against Leona. It's a, just a universally good pick. All right, well, also, well, they're taking the time here. It seems like maybe they were expecting to get Thresh or something like that, but there's so many different things they can pick here. And if you're on All-Star World's you know, side, if you're in this kind of situation, you see the supports picked, like, we always wonder, at least as casters, what they, or what's going through their minds? Like, do we, should, should we pick support now, not give anything away, being on that red side? I mean, I mean, that's really, really depends on what you want to go in with this. Um, I mean, some people like actually picking the owner to thresh even though it's a little bit rough lane uh, maybe they do want to just put their support out there right away and then just pick a strong jungle pick Vi is still up uh, Wukong Pantheon jungle there's so many uh, I want to see that by the end of the uh, end of today RNA promised me he'd show it to me so maybe we'll see it if they go to the finals Looks like, wow, so Gragas and Yasuo, they were banned out last game. Gragas was taken away by Fierce Gaming, and Yasuo was taken away by Ocelot World. I wonder if that's going to be the Gragas jungle, or that either they're going to put a mid lane in the Yasuo top. I think it's going to be the Gragas jungle, but actually, no, if I remember last game, they banned Yasuo, so. Yeah, yes, they banned Yasuo, and then uh, Fierce Gaming banned out Gragas. Yeah, looked like they, I'm not sure why they would ban him, and they just pick him in first rotation the next game. Yeah. I, I'm actually not sure if Ocelot's even a Yasuo player. I uh, would imagine. He isn't. He played a lot of Gragas when they were practicing as a team trying to get into the Coke League, yeah, so I wouldn't say that'd be like going a, middle. Yeah, it doesn't seem like an Ocelot type champion either. So I can see him being top lane in the course of Gragas mid. And Gragas is a pretty safe champion. It doesn't really have that many bad matchups. Even if you counter pick him at this point, it's like, oh hey, we'll just put him in the jungle. So that, I like I like that pick. That is very true. Also, even in the top lane, we saw Kevin do that yep. uh, not so long ago too. And you know, to me, JWoww is a really aggressive top laner. Like I was saying before, he plays, you know, Kazakh as well. He's really well known for his Kazakhs, really aggressive, kind of high damage champions. And it wouldn't be surprising to actually see him on that Yasuo in the top lane, but we do see Lee Sin and Jax picked up. That that's is actually a scary they, two picks. That's actually one of the reasons why they banned their Necton there. They wanted to play the Jax, it looks like. Uh, the Necton's one of the harder counters, uh, harder lanes for Jax to go against. And I guess they feel like there's just no picks that Jax would have any trouble with. Even if they pick Siobhan at this point, Jax is still not that bad against that. Um, but they could still potentially pick like a Mundo or something, or, a, or, a, or an Asus, so we'll see. Mundo is exactly right up Warden's alley as well. I'm not sure if he's playing it too much lately, but you know, I'm thinking about this. If you think how Nim played last game, you know, on that vibe, he went for one, maybe two ganks, you know, towards the bottom side of the map, but that was it. And how's he going to fare in Lee Sin? Because you kind of have to be aggressive. Yeah, Lee Sin's a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. He's a bit more mechanically intense champion. So after that Vi game, I'm not quite sure. And they're just going to go in with the Leona. Leona versus Thresh is kind of a weird lane. Thresh really bullies you all the way up until level six. And then once you hit six, you could potentially just instantly kill somebody in Leona. And I mean, that's just any Leona lane. She just does so much CC and damage. It's insane. Um, and Ezreal's the perfect person with that. You just hit the Leona combo, and then ultimate with Ezreal, and then shift into them, and you just pop somebody instantly. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty good picks out of them. And they also have Ezreal, who's going to be able to get away from the Jax. And of course, his Mystic Shot doesn't really get affected by uh, Jax's uh, dodge and all that kind of stuff. I mean, just rem I remind you guys at home if you're just joining us today. Every champion is available on the 4.1 patch for this tournament. Uh, but Ezreal has, bugged, a, he? He has a slight, yeah, a slight bug to him where his Q will actually reset his auto attack animation, which it can be a positive or negative thing depending on yeah. how you really look at it. But all players have been informed about it, so Haydal will know about that. And it looks like I hope we don't see that Maokai. Oh yeah, no, I don't want to see. I don't think they get Maokai because they at least already. But I'm surprised they aren't picking the Vayne into the Ezreal. That's a pretty good pick up against that. It's also a pretty good pick up against Lee because you. Demo away, which he goes in. Uh, but it looks like they want to offer the the sever. 
ran on top of that. So it looks like they have a really big team fight comp. Um, both teams have heavy team fight comps. You're, you're probably going to see a lot of dragon fights this game. Because, um, I mean, Ocelot's team has that Gragas Yasuo combo, followed up by Leona. And, of course, you're going to have Ezreal backing it up. And then Fury's game is going to have that Oriana Wombo combo. I mean, you can even put the ball in Jax or Lee Sin. They can jump in and just pop somebody. I think it's look at how fast they are, too. I mean, you have the, the speed, out, the dissonance out of Oriana. You have the ultimate out of Severe. You have uh, the Talisman Ascension, if we do see Thrush go for that. Like, that is going to be ridiculously hard to get away from. And, oh, my God. Is it going to be the monkey? Is We've it going to be the about monkey? It. I, I want to save it for later if we potentially will see it. But if that does get, you know, we, we went to dinner the other night and we actually talked specifically about Wukong for, I think it was about 10, 15 minutes. You're talking about it's how I'm going to this. Talk, talk, talk why he's so damn good in the jungle or if he will be there. Uh, I mean, he could okay. be in the top lane or the jungle at this point. But Yasuo, Wukong is also another good combo. You got AoE knockup. Um, but I think Wukong is one of the most underplayed jungles in the game because he just has amazing base stats. He has Shivana's passive. He has their exact passive, pretty much. You get the same stats out of it. And then you have a 4.8 AD ratio on the ultimate. That's the highest AD ratio in the entire game. And it's AoE. It's AoE on top of that. So, and then you also have Armor Shred. I don't know. I just love the monkey. He's you, have, like, you have attack speed steroid off your E. Yep. I mean, and your ultimate... And you can also do a lot of really skilly ganks yes. with his uh, with his W. It Actually, you were sorry, you were talking about this exact matchup that night because you were talking about Lee Sin versus Wukong. Because I mentioned, what about Lee Sin? Because he can see where you're going, and you you pointed out something specifically for this. If you're yeah, a good you Wukong player, if you're actually really good with Wukong's uh, W, his decoy, you can block Lee Sin's skill shots with that. And then if you, if you take that Lee Sin skill shot with your W, you just outright win the trade. So I don't really feel like Wukong. It's pressured that much by. And it, if Lee Sin decides to counter gank a Wukong's level 6 gank, he's just going to get knocked up in the AoE. Mm -hmm. So I really, really like Ocelot's team. Huge AoE wombo comp, really nice front line. Uh, you're going to have the Leona and the Wukong going in. And then you also have Yasuo is going to be flying in there, and Gragas is just going to be knocking everybody all over the place. So uh, I don't know. I, I really like Ocelot's comp. Maybe I'm just a, I, too I, big a fan of the No, monkey. no, I agree. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, he can get in there so easily because of that stealth. Like, he can just appear top lane, knock you up, and then Yasuo is going to get the kill. Or yeah. you pair bottom lane, set up Leona at the same time. And then on top of that, Sivir took cleanse. She didn't take barrier. So she's going to be almost a sitting duck with that Wukong gang. I really don't what? like that she took cleanse. I mean, you could stop a Leona stun. That's literally That's all you can stop on the entire team. So you're just going to pretty much instantly die to a Gragas Yasuo combo. Or a Wukong. If anybody gets on her, she's dead. See, and I'm definitely with you about Ocelot's composition, but Fierce Gaming, they're fighting for their their tournament hopes here. They're going to be on the blue side. We have Ocelot on the red side. Remember, also, if they win this game, it will advance into the semifinals to play against Pain Gaming a little bit later on today. You know, I've actually never seen the Yasuo Jax top lane matchup. I'm not quite sure how that goes. I, I can see it being pretty even, though, uh, at least for the first six levels. But of course, uh, Gragas pressures Oriana pretty hard once you hit your ultimate. Um, and even at level two, you can all in him with a body slam. And then, of course, you can have Wukong ultimate that's going to be potentially ganking off of that. So bottom, lane, or bottom and mid are going to see a lot of fights. All right, well, I really want to see this game kick off. I feel like this is one of those games that it gets really explosive really quickly. Yeah. With, with just the whole comp that both teams have. Yeah, I mean, I could see this just snowballing either way for either team. They just have these great team fights. Um, yeah, this should just be one explosive dragon fight, and it's just going to completely turn turn the tides of the game, probably. And Fierce Gaming, we're finally seeing an invade here out of this team, or out of, out of any team pretty much throughout the entire uh, weekend so far. And it's going towards the blue up. They wanted to nice away from Wukong, and I'm assuming since you're such a big fan of Wukong, you know how he works in the jungle, but he's, I'm assuming, not that blue intense. I mean, it's nice to have blue, but I don't really think they care. And they have Ezreal that's going to be sitting there watching that. Unless he gets caught watching the blue, uh, Wukong could probably just go for their blue. And that's one of the reasons also why people stopped invading on top of that, because all the junglers became smart and like, oh, you took my blue, I'll take your blue. You took my red, I'll take your red. And they just always just ended up in a trading situation. But they might catch Gragas here. Oh, also, the nice word. Oh, wow. A nice word over the wall, and he takes the body slam level one to escape from that thrush hook. Is that going to affect him in lane too much? I mean, I think he'll be fine. He might have a little bit of farming troubles and get pressured in, but that's his case even if you have uh, any of the other abilities on Gragas. All right, well, right now we're going to see Morden start at his red buff here. We're going to have Nim start over at his red buff as well. And let's let's talk about the lanes a bit. You said top lane. You don't really see a Yasuo Jax combo, so we can skip over that one. We talked a little bit about uh, Oriana and Gragas, how 
level two, you can probably all in or in Orianna. At level six, it becomes really dangerous for an Orianna. Is there anything else you can tell us about this uh, this lane? Because I'm really surprised. The Orianna actually took her uh, shield level one. And wow, we actually saw counter bait coming out of Allstar World. They get 1984 very low on life. Actually, over the flash to go for the ignite. Dio's getting taken very low by the turret, but he does escape and they get the first blood. But here he comes in from the side. He does have the red buff. He does get the ignite. He's going to be able to pick up this kill. Kadal will go down, but it will allow the red team. Well, at least D here to escape. That's so much early aggression. I think it's a really big mistake because he took that one summoner. And wow, right now, because Morden did spot Nim towards the bottom side of the map, he's going for an invade here, he's going to take away this blue buff, and this could be huge. Yeah, I like Morden's play on this. I mean, taking at least his blue is not... You're like, oh, I'm going to have a little bit less energy regen. It's not that bad, but of course, he's going to get a little bit of level advantage off of that, assuming he does get it. Oh, he's going for it here. He does have smite available. He's going to be able to lock this one up. And you can see, ooh, that was close. Nim, it's just a little bit too late there. And it's unfortunate because he could have maybe gone for the, the counter jungle on his side if he wanted to. But he did head up towards that. And that does give more that nice advantage. And the thing is, earlier hits level six, more dangerous this is going to get. Yeah, you might see a gank on mid. Uh, also, it might actually body slam flash into Oriana, but I mean, she seems to know he's there. So nothing's going to happen on that. Yeah, let's take a look at this top lane, because we're both not really too familiar with how this lane works out between these two champions. And JY right now looks like he's just shoving the lane. He does have a little bit of a CS advantage, but obviously that will be uh, changed up here when Accelerate is able to get the CS. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised that he's just pushing him in like this. I guess Yasu has a lot of poke with his uh, his Q. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming Jax just wants to farm into the turret until he's 6, because Jax is not the strongest champion until he's level 6, so I think he just wants to get those levels and happily farm under the turret right now. And what's your thoughts on the items that he actually went for? Because he has a Dorn shield compared to the Dorn's Blade of JWoww. I think that's definitely the way to go. I mean, Yasuo does a lot of auto attack damage, and assuming you do take a bad trade, it'll be good for you. Oh, and the Q lands from Nim. He does get the slow with the red buff, but JWoww, he has Flash from Able. Looks like he's actually going to be forced to use it here as he does get ignited. He does get the knockup. He's actually not going to use it, not even going to commit that. And look at the damage he did turning this around. You know, that's actually a huge uh, miscommunication error. Um, on that part because Jax had just used his uh, stun proc on uh, while he's farming under the turret. Yeah, really unfortunate, but now Dio getting caught a little bit there. We see the aggression coming out of Fierce Gaming. They didn't look too strong in that last game uh, with their AD carry support, but they're doing a lot better this time here, though they're behind a little bit in CS, but you can see, I mean, they're just shoving also World out of this bottom lane, and you kind of expected that, though, until we, uh, we see Leona hit six. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Thresh just has uh, a little bit too much control over that lane. It's a, it's a ranged champion against a melee, and Leona, even if she does hit her E, you can play her mid-air, and it will stop her from doing anything. And you can just disengage off of that and poke her down. Which is, I'm going to go and assume that's what happens, since Leona's so chunked here. And right now, we do see him heading down towards the bottom side. He's not going to be spotted in that tri-bush. He knows Halo doesn't have flash, as well as Dude. All it takes is one hook. Tomax is going to be going in here. If he gets this hook, it's going to be very dangerous. He's going to go for Halo. Doesn't land as Halo does. Okay, that was a mistake to go for the Ezra. I mean, of course yeah. he's going to... Sitting duck, but Leona that doesn't have flash. Like remember, you took her flash uh, in the early part of the game. You want to go for that sitting duck and get that that clean kill that you can get. I think there's only one man that's able to do that or is allowed to, and that's Mad Life against Ezreal. <laughs> yeah, Mad Life. Like all right, hook the guy top lane from bottom. All right, good, good job. <laughs> that's easy. Give me Lan something harder. Lantern me in. Lantern me in. Oh man, but I was just picturing somebody flying from bot lane with a lantern all the way up the top. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, I'm sure there's some way to make that happen, but you see the damage on Haydal taken right there. Might even be somewhat of a bait here. It's Morden going to be sitting inside that bush. He's not going to be spotted by Warrior, and all it takes is that one engage, though Haydal does have his barrier up. They do see the engage happen. The, the fight coming in perfectly right there, but they're able to commit to this. Morden chasing him down, doesn't have red buff. It looks like Tomex is going to be able to escape off of this. Yeah, really so weird to see the pre-6 Wukong gank, and on top of that, he mechanically failed. If you go in with Wukong like that, you want to auto Q since it's an attack reset. And he could have got off a lot of extra damage on that. And he still had his flash up, so I guarantee if Wukong mechanically played that gank better, he would have had the kill. Maybe it just kind of shows a little bit of uh, a lack of playing Wukong out of Morden, or maybe nerves. I don't, I don't know what it is, but you definitely do know Wukong if you <laughs> play him quite a bit and you're such a big fan of him. But in the meantime, we do see Ocelot doing a fairly good job mid lane. He's actually keeping up dead even at CS currently. He's a little bit behind just because of that wave being there, but he's having no troubles. Yeah, that's just the Gragas Oriana matchup. Once you get a couple levels, especially once you hit level six, um, you just pressure that Oriana because you can instantly kill her in one combo if she's out of position. And if the jungler decides to show up too, you're like dead to rights. <laughs> and right now, Morden, he's still just jumping away. He's only level 5 right now. And he does have a little advantage over Nim, who will be getting a little bit of CS off of uh, mid lane here, as well as some experience. 
top lane though. I still have to keep an eye on that because JWoww, he's hit level 6. This was Accelerator, who's actually going in for him. The Windmall, not really going to do anything right there. And you can see the damage that Accelerator is able to put down. And he was the kind of the saving grace, I want to say, for uh, Furious Gaming, as he was able to get the first one on JWoww in game number 1. Yeah, that lane's going about as they expected to go. Looked like Jax was a little bit pressured in the early game. Um, but now that he hit level 6 and he's going to go and buy, I'm pretty sure he'll be able to scrap it out with him. He does have uh, 800 gold to spend. Let's see what he picks up here. Maybe some boots. Probably a Vamp Scepter, maybe? No, nope. Vamp Scepter. There you go. Just, you're, just, you're just spot on. You know exactly what they're going to buy here. Uh, but now, right now, Morden going for red buff. Going to be hitting level 6 momentarily. There it is. Yeah, I'm actually really curious where he's going to go for the gank on. You have to remember, Sivir only has cleanse. So if they link up some good CC on that, instantly kill him. Same thing with Orianna. If Gragas knocks that Orianna back in, she's dead. It's also the other way around that too. If he gets the knockout first, and also like can't possibly miss that barrel. But I think he got spotted by that minion running around. Some of the weirdest minion pathing ever. <laughs> it's like that one minion in the the Reddit or thread, 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 the video that you saw. It actually chased someone around the entire map. But right now he's not able to commit anything off that just yet. Going to be spotted by that ward right there, and he's going to head up towards this top. I actually, side. don't think he got spotted by that. Oh, he didn't. If you hug that edge, you actually don't get spotted by that ward. But that ward's definitely <laughs> going to spot him. Yeah, that was definitely going to make it happen. He's heading up towards the top side. So we're already very, very low on life. Knock up, unfortunately, knock it up. Right there. But Blue Buff gets away yet again. Keep uh, Oriana behind right now, or at least keep that Blue Buff away from her. And yep. he's going to be able to at least stall him in with Ocelot coming from the side looking for a fight. Yeah, it looks like Oriana's going to be a little bit ahead of him on that. But you have to look. Jax is so pressured in top that Yasuo can just come down. And Jax isn't going to be able to do anything about this. It'll be a 3v2. And Jax isn't even healthy either for that trade that we just saw happen from top side. But right now, it's like we're going to see the Smite Steel actually going to be taken away. Nim does get the one, but he gets knocked up for his troubles. The ultimate out of, out of Gragas, unfortunately, doesn't land because of the flash. But he gets the kill either way. He gets the blue buff. And now, Moyne's head towards his top side. He's looking for a kill on the Jax. He got that Smite, but at what cost? I mean, they just delivered the blue buff right back to him. I mean, it's best blue buff transfer in A. <laughs> but we're in Brazil. Yeah, we're saying in A. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, the bottom lane has gotten a little less wonky, a little less action happening. It's just to say that they start to battle it out right here. But CS, Haydel still has a nice lead. I'm about 10 CS currently. And is Elaine going to start to snowball here? Because Did you see those threat mechanics right there? He pulled that minion into the server could last hit it. He planned that. This guy's an amazing Thresh player. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Say, call him best Thresh player BR. Yeah. Uh, but right now, I mean, it's just kind of, let's just keep farming, not really going for any kills. Dude is level 6. Hey, though, it's still only level 5, though, because he's forced to back away. Yeah, but actually, the server lane, the server's going to hit uh, level 6 before the uh, Ezreal. And they also have that pretty big wave piling in. And on top of the Ezreal's a little bit chunk, so um, it could be pretty dangerous for either side. Right now, we do see Morden going to be taking his own loop up here. Of course, he didn't have that when he used his ultimate last time, so he's not going to have that reduced cooldown on that ultimate. But 40 seconds left, not that much. He does have flash available. He is spotted by that ward. And it looks like Nim is here to kind of counter or counter gank this, but it's that just gave really it away. early Sivir ult. I'm yeah. not quite sure what she's going at with that. I didn't know if they were going to try to run into them and bait a fight since Lee Sin was right behind them with the boots and mobility. Um, it's kind of really weird use of the Sivir ult. I don't know. Playing a little bit scared. Yeah, I mean, I think they realize like what's on the line here. If they do lose this map, they will be out, knocked out in the quarterfinals. And they're the last Latin American team here that at least qualified through the Latin American qualifiers, so they want to at least have some sort of pride for their area. And unfortunately for them, it's not really in their favor, but right now it's only a thousand gold difference, so it's not like it's impossible for them to do this. I mean, you're expecting a lot of dragon fights to break out here. Are we going to see what's happening anytime soon? Yeah, but it just the situation in the bot lane is so back and forth. I don't think either team is in a position unless they get this gank off of this Wukong. He does have flash. He does have that. The least is sitting in that brush, too. He's waiting to counter gank this. He's going to get spotted by that ward. So, oh, actually, we're going to see them go for the engage here. Wukong comes from the side. They do get a nice little ultimate. Paired it with the Ezra ulti. Here comes Wukong. He does get slowed, though. He's forced to flash into there. But we see a nice flash coming out of uh, Severian of Tomax. He's in trouble here with that base damage off that ultimate. Getting very low on health, but he's going to be able to escape here. And of course, not going to be able to turn that around, but a great escape, a great flash out of 1984, but that might have just opened up Dragon. Yeah, that was a really good threshold. And it, it managed to get the Wukong slowed for just enough time where the Sivir get out. But yeah, they probably will get Dragon off this. If you look, Orianna just went back to base. Uh, Gragas has all the control in that lane, so pretty much free Dragon right here. Speaking of control, look at the CS lead they've been able to build up too. 94 to 72. That is, that's really starting to get out of hand uh, in middle lane. And in the meantime, top lane, we see a little bit of fighting happening here, but he's still there. He's, he's fared decently well, but. One downside is he doesn't have unlimited mana, basically, like JWoww does. Yeah, I think that's kind of nice. And also, you have that passive uh, that gives you the shield for trading. So, um, I think once he gets that static shiv, it might be a little bit rough on Jax. But under the same notion, if he goes Blade of the Ruin King, or even Osura Gunblade, or some type of sustain item, I think he'll be fine. 
Well, and I'm really surprised that the Orianna is so far behind on CS when there's been not really that much jungle pressure. Like, all the jungle pressure, they just they spotted him on the ward. He hasn't really been ganked that much. And the Gragas Orianna matchup is really just dependent on the jungler pressuring the lane. And Jay, wow, nice use to Woodward there. Blocks the Q out of uh, Nim, though I don't think it actually would have landed either way. But he's his thing is every time Nim has come towards his top side to go for a gank out of JWoww, the first time they both got low and they're and they're supposed to back away and JWoww was fine on health. This time just stops the gank with just his wind wall. Didn't even have a ward down squadron coming in and he's committing so much time out of Nim towards his top side to help out uh, Accelerator that he's just unable to gank other lanes currently. Yeah, it's a really nice use of the wind wall and he seems pretty confident on that champion. I uh, really like that. I mean, he just, he just doesn't care. He doesn't have a ward. He's just going to still play right up into them. And Wukong's going to be coming up here. He has ult just coming up. Um, he hasn't been back to buy in a long time, though. He doesn't have his Elderless yet. But I'm pretty sure they'd win this 2v2. Especially with that knockup. Yeah, so should be able to go to town here. He does have that zeal still done. So he's also actually going for a little bit of counter dribbling here as well. Noticing that at least from his top line, he's like, all right, free race for me. Might as well pick those up. He's actually doing some damage onto uh, Orianna here. He does have his ultimate available. He does, he does get the ignite down and the auto attacks, but it forces the barrier and the flash. Also, will he commit to this? No, he's going to back away. Oh, he doesn't so have too low. much mana left. Yeah, I think if he had a little bit more mana, he would have probably went for that. In the meantime, you're actually seeing... Uh, also, well, they were headed down from the, top, from the top side here for some reason. It looks like blue buff is really what they want to see happen. Oh, yeah. They actually fought down a bot lane, and Leona blew her ultimate. So uh, he ended up whipping it, but it was at the cost of Sivir and Thresh's flash. That's not a bad trade either way. I mean, that ultimate's not even on a long cooldown, and you are seeing them still try to be aggressive here. seeing Hado, he actually went for a Sheen. So he went straight into that Triforce as we do see them go straight on the 1984, but a nice use of that Spell Shield does block the stun, and the hook does land on a Hado. They're going to commit to this as Thresh ultimately comes down. But 1984, he just can't get close enough. He's just already so low on life, and they just turn straight on the Tomex. But now they're just falling so low. Also, it has to be careful here, but coming down from middle lane. Yeah, the potentially looking for a kill. The Leon is just so beefy. Oh, provides no. much feeling. That is a slow. That is Wukong coming in. That is not going to have to save his life. They pick up the kill right there. So that's two quick kills coming in. In the meantime, Nim heading down. Does pick up one kill, uh, but not actually his uh, AD carry died, unfortunately, in the meantime. But now, dude, he's stuck here. He's going to be running he's, right into him. Oh, he does get taken down. But at what cost is Nim? Actually tries to flash over the Dragon Wall, but he gets taken down. And that was a two for three trade right there. I've only two seen for that four least trade, in, sorry, for Oslo World. I've only seen that least in flash two times in this game, and both have been straight into the wall. <laughs> Maybe it's his style, maybe it's him saying he's not afraid. He's playing mind games with him, man. <laughs> he's like, they'll just flash over the wall, and I'll be still chilling here on the other side. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now JWoww with Accelerator action. We're having a pretty big goal lead build for us. We're only 14 and a half minutes in. And what's at that 5k mark? Yeah, that Yasuo top. He's so entirely sure if he's supposed to win that match. But this Jax has red buff. That's the combo. That is the deck accelerator. And that is red buff going over to JW on top of it. Fantastic for them. Uh, fantastic communication as well. And now Oriana and he said trying to go for move up here. We do have morning come from the side, but you can see look how scared they are to actually contest this. It's a 3v2, their Jax is dead. Even though they don't have their ultimates up, I don't think they want to take this fight. And uh, Oriana's ult still down. Leeson's ult is still down as well. Oh, he gets it with the spike! Last second, fantastic job. I haven't turned that one around at least, but unfortunately for them still, Orianna has not had a blue buff this entire game. Yeah, I think putting the blue buff on the Lee Sin and just denying it from the Orianna is just as good as taking it yourself. All right, now we see the bottom lane of Offset World. They dead even in CS right now, though we have the Triforce done for Haydal here, and they're actually starting to push up a little bit because of the rest of the pressure uh, coming in around this map. And Morden, he wants to take away the red buff as well. He wants to deny everything he possibly can, and I gotta the thing say, is he's actually behind in levels compared to them. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm actually really impressed with Ocelot this game. He's, he just came from top lane, he just came from their blue buff. He's been all over the map. Oh, well, he did just put some kill down on towards the bottom side of the map. Hato was able to pick up that kill under turret, it looks like. And they're even gonna push in towards these double golems. I mean, right now, Ocelot will have full control of this bottom half of the jungle. Yeah, this is, looks like a pretty different Ocelot. He's just completely controlling his lane. He's roaming everywhere on the map. Um, he's just... He has the game in his hands. He's just doing whatever he wants to do. And all Wukong has to do is back him up, and they just insta-pop anybody who decides to, decides to contest. And with being such a huge fan, I actually do see right now Morden getting engaged upon right there over towards the, the raid camp. And he's going to be able to escape here, but not without the cost of his ultimate being used. Yeah, that's both Wukong and Gragas ultimate. Um, they don't really have that long of cooldowns, and of course they have CDR for the jungle item, so that's not that bad of a trade. And at least he makes it out with his life. Um, they already have... Almost a, a five, they have a 5,000 gold lead, almost 6,000 at 16 minutes in the game. This is not looking good for Furious Gaming. 
Um, Asat's world, Asat world has such a good team fight comp, and once it comes to this next dragon, if if Yuri's game decides to contest it, it's gonna be ugly for them. And look at that damage. Oh no, the warden doesn't get over the wall, and that's gonna cause Star in his life, or at least his flash. He does go down, and we're seeing flashes into walls, wards into walls. It's just not working out well. Yeah, it looks like Furious game is a little bit flustered, and they're just getting outclassed in the lanes right now. I mean, if you look across the board, speaking of that, I mean, top lane, 170 to 115 CS, mid lane, 153 to 120. The only lane that's really keeping up is this bottom lane, but Hado has those four kills under his belt. Yeah, uh, I don't know. The Ezreal already has his Triforce. He has the Vamp Scepter. They're going to probably pick up this next dragon. I don't see any way they're going to contest it. Even though Wukong doesn't have the ultimate, nobody's really in position to do anything about it. The Lee Sin's down there, but... I don't know. I don't really think that they could win a straight out fight against them. The thing is, JO is just constantly pushing this top, but it's it's pulling multiple members of Fierce Gaming up towards that top side. You see the bottom lane, a fight already breaking out here. X84 getting very low. He actually flashed out of the Ezra ult to get saved by Nim towards the backside, but here comes Warren from the side. Tomex, I'm not sure if he's going to escape this. They do land the Q onto him. Here goes Asa. The ult's going to come out. It's not going to get the kill, but it will knock Lisa away, and it will basically guarantee them this dragon. Scumbag Asla trying to chaos the kill for them. That's like. <laughs> Like in the rules of League of Legends, in the tutorial. Oh wow, that's very true. And going over to Asa World, they have an 8,000 gold lead almost right now. It's just slipping further and further into their own hands, and I'm not really sure. I don't know if you can think of anything either where Fears can kind of get back into this. I would imagine it would probably be the best or the first thing. I don't think that's happening. Every time they walk in the lane to try to do anything, they just get butchered. Like, look, the Jax is just like, oh, I'm going to hide in this brush and hope you go away. Please don't hurt me anymore, bad man. <laughs> well, unfortunately, he doesn't go away right there. In the meantime, we're having an push out middle. Does have that blue buff available. So things and Holy Grail sitting on 800 gold. Does have an insular draw as well the, uh, on top of that. So he's basically a full half an item ahead of his opponent right now. He's actually getting ganked in middle, but he actually does dodge out on that Sonic Wave. Borden off to the side to make something happen as well as Jay is coming down from that top side. We could see... Oriana getting dove on here. Yeah, I don't think she's going to walk up to that. Uh, that's pretty scary. Wukong, Yasuo, and Greg is sitting in front of you. And, you know, you were talking about how you're a big fan. Oh, actually, meantime, you see Bob Lane, another fight breaking out here. And say for able to dodge Ezreal yet again here, forcing the flash at a dude. But at what cost, really? Because now it's a four on two, at least a three on three now. Because we have uh, Warden coming down from the top side. He's looking for that initiate here. Dio doesn't have ultimate available. Might have Zenith played in just a second. But they're not going to go up the fight here. In the meantime, also at the backside, just harassing around Oriana here, and you can see they're kind of stuck here. They have to make a move. You have you know, Xavier towards the top side pushing up, but we see the bomb turret go down. We see Nim getting pushed in a little bit too far. Here comes Asa. You see that perfect position for the ultimate with the help of Morden. Luis actually go for it. He does use it. Spreads it completely apart as Yasuo comes in. They pick up one. Pushing that top end, looking for a turret, but losing a turret. Losing four men, losing potentially another turret on top, but it's not a good trade. And that's the combo I've been waiting all game to see. They had the Wukong ult, Dragus knock up, Yasu just came in and just cleaned everybody up. A really nice play. The thing is, he has a BF sword. He's basically close to his affinity edge if he wants to uh, pick that up next. Like, he's at the point where he's so damn tanky that Pierce game doesn't really have an answer to it. I mean, Maybe a Thresh Hook would help stop him from doing anything in the middle of the fights, but how to land that with the Wukong and Dragus, and yeah, that's there's just about it. I mean, you so have many people stuff. flying at you. I don't think there's going to be anything going on here with that. Um, they just have too much of a lead, and Onslaught World basically would just have to get aced at Baron and then lose Baron. It's the only way I could see Furious Gaming come back into this game. And those boosts with ability almost made it so more you could actually catch up to Accelerator right there, but in fact, just going to back away. It's a big fan of Wukong in the jungle. Is this a typical item build you to see out of them, or is this something you'd like to see? I mean, the boots are all situational, uh, really by choice. I, I don't particularly like the boots and mobility, but they don't have that much CC, so I'm fine with it. Usually, you want to get like Murtred, so. And, of course, he's going to just turn that giant spell into a random one. And he's going to be the tankiest thing ever. And then he'll eventually finish that Black Cleaver. If the game even gets to that point, um, it'll just armor share for the, uh, the Yasuo and the Ezreal. Funny enough, look what Dio's picked up. He's got the shield, but it's 
didn't come in until like a lot, uh, not that long ago. He actually didn't start in the lane about it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's kind of weird that he would uh, go straight for that Dorn. Like, I don't think you really have to start Dorn Shield on uh, Leona. I think you can get away with going to targets. Look but, at uh, the damage that JWoW does. We actually accelerated Flash out of that Wukong ultimate. She does get that up. Uh, that ultimate unavailable right now, but he's going to actually lose a turn in the meantime, and he's going to be able to commit, still get some CS here, but on all fronts, Oscar Ward is just controlling the turret. game. One last turret on the outside of their base. That's all they're going to hold on to. So they pretty much have really heavy control around Baron now. I think what Ocelot World needs to do right now is they just need to, they have really good vision around Baron. They can deny all that, and they just need to contest that. And they need to pull, the pull on Ocelot here with the red buff. The ultimate coming out completely spreads them apart. Now Tomex might get in trouble here as Morden is trying to chase him down, but said he does just back away. Going to keep this advantage that they've been able to build up here. And not to mention, JWoww's not really in the vicinity to help out with this one, but it is a, a little bait right there, but they still use that pink ward for it. Yeah, but now they don't have Threshold. Um, I don't think that they're too scared about getting engaged on uh, anymore. I mean, that's one of their main forms of uh, lockdown is that Thresh ultimate. Um, so, also they're really far behind. Even if they hit that threshold you saw, they didn't have enough damage and people in position to even kill that, that Gragas. And not to mention, also was able to pick up that death cat. Now he's damaged going through the roof. So, hey, you know, going with that blade of the roof. And the ring king and gone to a phase as well. So he's going that Triforce next, but I feel like he's not tanky enough to deal with Teemo outside that world with just that Blood of the Room King. I honestly feel like if it was the right fight, the Gragas and the Yasuo could 2v5 their team. Well, we're going to see that Oriana completely disappear. Maybe a couple of ultimates used there that weren't really necessary. They do pick that one up. Wukong does have his ultimate available. Yasuo is going to be up momentarily here. and They're going to continue barreling down on this inhibitor turret. I'm not sure if Fury's game can hold on to this. Yeah, that... Oriana died almost instantly, and that's the beauty of that Gragas combo plus the Yasuo. You can engage from so far away, and you have such a huge power spike of damage. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to defend this without their Oriana. That's their main form of wave clear. Sivir has pretty low range, even though you can clear with the Boomerang Blade, but I think they're just going to walk right up in there and just take this. And not to mention, also has a blue buff, so his ultimate's going to be on a quick uh, cooldown right now. They're going to start pushing, they're going to get this inhibitor turret. That's going to fall very, very fast. And you see Dio just zone them out completely from this. They're going to get inhibitor off this as well. I mean, they <laughs> They're, they're approaching being 50,000 gold up right now. It's Hado does get high, does get locked down with the stun, he does get forced away. He's actually still escaping with a with a little bit of life right now. He gets kicked back in his team. He's gonna survive this. And you're seeing Jaywell. Look at the damage he just did to Severe. The Orion's are coming out. Jaywell gets very low. He's gonna get shut down, but also turns around, picks up the kill, and somehow Hado is still alive. He is still trying to run. He's still trying to escape. His name is trying to chase him down. Will he have the team to back up? Yes, they do back up. Hado stays alive, and now we're seeing Oriana try to run away. Gonna hit the lantern, gonna escape, but. The Yoda ultimate going to be used there just just because, you know, why not? Yeah, I can't believe Hadal lived there. It looked like he was trying his hardest to die there. He actually walked straight up to the Jax, high-fived him, oh, got no. stuck in the face and died. Oh, so Barrel rolling over. Body second over while picks up the kill. He's now 6-0-6 and six in this game. Dragon's Brow going to come out as uh, the ultimate. He's actually going to get played away from that body stand, but look at the damage just did from the ultimate and that Q. And if he landed that body stand, that would have been a death rush. Yeah, the fat man kind of hurts at this point. He's probably going to go back and pick up most of the parts of his Void Staff. Yeah, he's sitting on right around the money for it, so... Even if they do decide to get any magic at this point, which they don't have the money for either, uh, he's just going to two-shot you anyways. And you know what's really strange about this? The Ezreal actually went with the Boots of Swiftness uh, instead of the Zerkers. He just wants to have that really high mobility build. He has Blade of the Ruin King that's going to give him a Speed Burst and the Triforce and the Boots of Swiftness. He's just going to be running so fast. I think it's, it's funny is that that was the only fight out of this entire game that he was actually pressured in, in, a, in a team fight sense where he, you know, he got dove in the back step. That was his fault for getting caught, I feel like, because he got stomped up. And, and he, he got... didn't even get caught. He just walked straight up at the jack. He's like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and then, of course, he got caught by like eight stuns and somehow made it out. I have yeah, no idea how. Yeah, right there. Uh, but right now, we see also, I mean, they have control of this game completely. I'm really surprised that they're not trying to finish it anytime soon, or maybe even go for Baron, but we just think Rock's Barrel actually opens up. We're going to see Accelerate drop instantly right there with the combo. And that is just Yasuo Gragas. Uh, yeah, that's so, Yasuo Gragas right there. <laughs> Got in that double kill. We're in the backside. Now Oriana getting caught here, trying to take that hate up. But he just didn't have the damage he needs because he's so limited on farm. He's going to get taken down. And this is certainly going to be the end because they have the Supermans in the middle. They have it pushed onto these next turrets. They're going to go for the first one here. They're going to be able to pick this one up. And he's sitting in Thresh. There's nothing they can do about this. Yeah. Uh, 
this game looks pretty much over. I don't think Thresh and Lee Sin's gonna be able to defend against all these all these fed people. Oh yeah, so he's gonna be kicked back into the turret, but he actually does stay alive. The Wukong also come in, they even get the kill at Tomex. So I should tell them that Kenny doesn't really matter right now. They can just finish this game, but they're gonna lock this one down. They're gonna pick this up and a clean sweep, a 2-0. Also roll did advance on in the semifinals to play against Payne Gaming, and you hear the crowd cheering for them now. I wonder what's going to happen when you have Pain versus them. Yeah, it's so funny. The Portuguese cast were telling us that Ocelot World's team is basically Brazilian to them. Uh, it was, it was at least in this particular matchup. So they're, they're a little, little bit behind them. And you see that. They, they've got to be happy considering how quickly they just kind of packed up everything and came down here for this event. Coming in last minute, probably tired as hell from the fights on top of that and to not have that much practice. And even with all the, the I, I guess, sad things that's been happening to them, you know, with them not qualifying for the Coke League, uh, also, League of SK Gaming making his own team here. This has got to be a nice little breath of fresh air for them to realize, you know, guys, we, we're still a good team. We should keep working at this. Yeah, I got to say, I was actually really surprised how well they played play that second game. Um, they won out right in the laning phase. They control buffs. They controlled objectives. Even though they didn't really control Baron that much, which I would have liked to have seen more. Mm -hmm. um, but they just ran them over in the laning phase. Like, every lane won. There wasn't, there wasn't even anywhere close. They just all won out right. They picked up dragons. They secured almost every blue buff and kept it from the Orianna, so she couldn't really do anything. And then they were taking red bus on the least end, <laughs> so uh, they had a really nice team comp too. I really like that team comp. A lot of synergy, really good. What was your thoughts on JWoww on that top lane? Because I like I like being able to see a player that can play someone that's a tank like Renekton, and then be able to transition to someone that can play an aggressive assassin at the same time. Yeah, I really like adaptable play. Um, I honestly didn't expect him to pull out the Yasuo top. Um, it looked really good. I didn't know how I was going to fare into that Jax matchup. I guarantee the Jax has probably never even played this matchup either. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm serious. People will go into games. I'm like, wow, this is a, kind of an oddball pick. I'm not sure how to play this. So um, maybe I caught off a little bit, got a little bit caught off guard on that and played the matchup a little wrong, but uh, looked pretty strong. And uh, I mean, let's just go the, the kills for the entirety of All Star World. There's 6-1-5 for JWoww on that Yasuo, 4 0 6 for Morden on that Wukong. 708 for Oslo and Grog, a 626 for Hayda on Ezreal, and then Dio d died once, 0 1 14. I just hope they all report Ezreal for dying twice. <laughs> Damn it, Hayda. <laughs> but yeah, either way, congratulations.